Good evening. Welcome to our special message. It is Monday, March 2nd. I'll keep doing these special messages as long as God keeps putting thoughts in my in my head, things that I feel that uh, that we could all grow from knowing. Uh, and so God has laid another one on my on my heart uh, for tonight. Uh, so I want to thank those of you that that continue to watch these. Good evening, John. Uh, those of you that watch them live, those of you that watch them later on, um, I realize that the viewership has a lot to do with the subject. Uh, whenever, whenever, the, whenever someone has died, and I've done a tribute, those are always the, the highest by far. Even Gloria. Um, so let me open with a prayer, Father. I pray that uh, people that are that are struggling finding peace in their life, God, that you would lay it on their hearts uh, to watch this video so that they could learn uh, from your word where real peace comes from. Uh, so God, uh, speak uh, through me and speak through your word tonight mightily. Amen. Um, good evening, Grace. Uh, what is one of the things that the United States constantly seeks in our world? Of course, it's peace. We're constantly looking for peace. Uh, we know that the absence of war means peace, but it just seems like there's always a war going on somewhere. We just recently bombed Syria. Uh, it just seems like there's always, when I grew up, I was the Vietnam War. Uh, I'm thankful that I didn't have to go there. Many of my friends went there and were killed there. So, so we try to avoid war at all costs because war means no peace. Um, families work hard to have peace. Uh, it's no fun at gatherings uh, when they're at odds with one another. Uh, you can cut the tension with a, these gatherings with a knife. You all know what I'm talking about. When, when, when part of the family doesn't get along with another part of the family and they're in the same room, Oh, the tension is just ugly. It's just ugly. There's, there's no peace. There's no peace in those kind of gatherings. Uh, we as individuals want peace in our life. Uh, peace is freedom from disturbance, tranquility. Uh, how many times have, for, for those of you moms, dads, how many times have you gone to the bathroom just to have peace for a moment? to get away from the children, to get away from the grandchildren, to get away from whatever's going on. You go to the bathroom where it's quiet and, and, and it's like you get peace for a moment. We, we all we all try to find peace uh, in our lives. There's a saying, know God, K-N-O-W, know God, and then you'll know peace. Or know God, N-O God, know peace. Peace, and O peace. So no, K-N-O-W, God, and then you'll know peace. But if there's no God, then there's no peace. Um, so real peace, real peace comes from really knowing God. Uh, and how? Well, there's no, no better way than knowing God through the scriptures. In 1 Corinthians 14, 33, it, it says this, For God is not a God of disorder. God is a God of peace. So wherever there's disorder, God's not there. God, if God is there, there there's peace. That, that's why many times in churches you feel you feel peace. You feel incredible peace inside the church. Because why? Because the Spirit of God is there and, and it creates peace. So so peace, real peace comes through God. So if you really desire peace in your life, it can only come through knowing God. Uh, no other way, you can't look for it any other way. Uh, in the world, if you look for it in the world, the world's going to give you disorder. Uh, no one wants disorder in their life. Uh, so what is your, let me ask you, what is your life mostly like? What is it mostly like in your life? What's it mostly like in your household? What's it mostly like in your household? Is it peaceful or is there a lot of disorder? For those of you that work, what's it like at your work? Is there a lot of disorder or is it peaceful? 
what's it like even in your church? Now, again, we're not meeting, but when you, when we were meeting, what, what what's it like in your church? Was was there peace or was there disorder? And then what's it like in your own life? Do you have peace in your life or is there a lot of disorder in your life? So God tells us about how to find peace. He, he, so we're going to look at the scriptures so God can talk to us about how we can find peace in our life. Because you'll, you'll never be happy. You'll never have contentment. You'll never be happy until you can find peace, real peace. So Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 says, We need to trust in the Lord with all of our heart. And, and not, lean not on our own understanding, but in your ways acknowledge him, and he will make our path straight. We, we, we First of all, thing we have to do is we have to acknowledge God and know that that's the source of our real peace. God is the source of our real peace. That's why no God and no peace. But if there's no God, there's no peace. So, so God needs to be in the center of our lives. God needs to be in the center of our homes. God needs to be in the center of our church. And God needs to be in the center of your life. Is God in the center of your life? Or is there other things that, have, that take precedence over God that are in the center of your life? Um, do you pray together as a family? Today, I, I, I took my grandkids to the park. We had a picnic at the park. And we had Subway sandwiches. And we pray before we eat. And it's just so neat so neat to see little James, who's five years old, who puts his head down and puts his hands together to, to pray. Oh, that is just so, so, so awesome to see that. I saw, I know this is off the thing, but I saw today on, a, in a, on, on Facebook where this man puts down dog food for his two dogs. But he puts a, like an ottoman up first. In front, in front of the food. And the two dogs put their paws up on the, on the ottoman and then they put their head down like they're praying before they eat. <laughs> now, again, that's just something to be comical. But do you pray? Do you pray with your, with your family before you eat, regardless of, of who you're with? Um, make God the center of, if God isn't the center of your home and if God isn't the center of your life, don't expect to find peace in your life. In Mark 4.39, it's interesting. Here he's, uh, 4.39, he gets in a boat with his disciples and the wind comes up and the disciples are completely scared. And he got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the, way, then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. Now, think of this. If God can calm a sea, a, a sea during a storm. Now, you, you've all been in storm, different kind of storms in your life. I grew up in North Dakota where there was incredible storms. I'm sure some of you have probably been on boats where there was a lot of storm, where there was a storm. Here's Jesus in this boat, the disciple, and he rebukes the wind, the storm, and it dies down. And then it's calm. Now, now, now think of this. If, if there's a storm in your life, if there's a storm in your life, call out to God. That's what the disciples did. They called out to Jesus, Jesus, we're going to die. And what does Jesus do? He calms the storm. C call out to Jesus. Jesus, there's a storm in my life. If, if he can calm a sea, a raging sea, can he not calm whatever it is, storm, that's going through your life? Now remember what I said, acknowledge him. His ways are so far beyond our ways. The first thing we have to do is acknowledge that he's capable of calm in a storm, and then we have to ask him to calm the storm, knowing that he can. In John 14, 27, it says this. It says, Peace I leave with you, Jesus said. My peace I give you. I do not give peace as the world gives. 
Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. It says, I, I, I'm going to give you peace, not the peace that the world gives. The, the, the world can't give you a peace like I can give you. My peace is totally, totally different. It, it's kind of like this. Win the lottery and you're happy for a year. No God, no God, and you have peace for a lifetime. Win the lottery only makes you happy for a year. Having peace, knowing God and having peace, knowing God gives you peace for a lifetime. Knowing God and knowing that God, what God can do, and knowing what God will do. That's why in John 16, 33, he says this, tells his disciples, Have I not told you these things so that in me you may have peace? In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Do you not know that you can find peace in Jesus? You can find peace through Jesus? There's, there's no other way. There's no other way. It's only through Jesus. Romans 5.1. I think I forgot to mark this one. Hold on. Romans 5.1. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. What sin separated you from God. So when you gave your life, when you gave your life to Jesus, it, 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 Jesus put made you right back right with God again. He, he, he put you at peace again with, with God. You were you before you gave your life to Jesus, you, you had no peace with God. You were separated from God. But now through Jesus pardoning our sins, you have peace with God. You are right with God, righteous, right with God, at peace with God. Now, there's nothing better than to be at peace with God. It's great if you're married and you're at peace with your spouse, that's great. If you have children and you're at peace with your children, that's great. If you have grandchildren and you're at peace with your grandchildren, that's great. But when you have peace with God, that's beyond all understanding. Beyond all understanding. And, and then, as a result, my favorite verse, as a result of knowing God, all right, as a result of having total peace with God, as a result of being right with God, then he gives us this promise. We know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. We know that God causes good out of everything that happens in your life. What an incredible promise now. His promise is that no matter what happens in your life, he's going to cause something to good to come out of it. Now, here's the amazing thing. Even if you do something wrong, even if you do something wrong to, to, to have total disorder in your life, as a child of God, because you gave your life to Jesus, as a child of God, God promises that he's going to make something good come out of that. Now, I don't know about you, but I can look back in my life. I can look back at things that happened in my life that at the time were just like, ugh, there was no peace at all. There was no peace at all. It was just, it was, my, my life was a mess because of what was going on. But then I look back on it now, and I see where God made something good come out of it. So in many cases, something great come out of it. Now, now, that ought to give you incredible peace. That ought to give you incredible peace, knowing that you are at peace with God, knowing that you are a child of God, and knowing that whatever happens in your life now, because you're a child and God loves you, he's going to make something good come out of it. Whew. What a promise. What a promise. That, sh that alone should give you peace, to just knowing that. So if you're going through something right now in your life, and maybe some of you have got some terrible things going on in your life right now, what you need to do now is you need to acknowledge God. You need to acknowledge God right now. R realize what he's capable of doing. Realize that you are a child of his and he loves you. 
and realize that when you call out to him like the disciples did when the raging sea, that he is capable of calming the storm in your life. He, he promises that he will make something come good come out of that storm that you're going through right now in your life. Those are incredible promises, my friends. Incredible promises. In Romans 14, 17, he tells us this. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness and peace and joy. The, the kingdom of God is not about drinking and partying and getting drunk. That, that's, that's not the kingdom of God. That, that, that's the world. That's the world. All, all that does is get you in trouble. It may be fun for a moment, but boy, you pay for it. It only causes trouble, and that's not where the kingdom of heaven is about. That's not what it's about. Uh, the, the kingdom of heaven is about having peace in your life, and that only comes from knowing God and being right with God. Partying and drinking and, drinking and all that does not make you right with God. So if you're into the, if you're, whatever it is in your life that, that, that you're doing that's separating you from God, because sin separates you from God, you, that's why scripture tells us over and over, stop, stop that, stop that in your life, because that's taking you away from God. Do the things that bring you closer to God, not taking you away from God. Because you want, if you want a peace in your life, you have to be at peace with God. In 2 Corinthians 13, 11, he says, Finally, brothers and sisters, aim for per perfection. Listen to my appeal. Be of one mind. Live in peace. Live, seek in perfection. How? By living in peace. By living in peace with everyone. <coughs> then the God of peace will be with you. That's why he says in Ephesians 4, 3, he says, make every effort, make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. You have to make every effort. Every If, if you're at odds with someone, you have to make every effort you can to, to, to bring back peace in that relationship. Now, you can't control them. If they're not willing to, to, to then there's nothing you could do about it. But, but if you make the effort, you try to, to make peace. So if you're at odds with someone right now, you need to make peace with them. You, hear me? you need to make peace with them. Because God is a God of peace. And God wants you to make every effort. He wants to make every effort to live at peace with, with everyone. In Philippians 4, 7. It says, and then the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That peace that comes from God, when you do the things that God tells you, that peace that comes from him, oh, it's beyond understanding. It is beyond understanding. That There's nothing greater. There's nothing greater than having peace in your life, total peace in your life. Not, and, and that only comes, I know I'm being redundant, but that only comes from being from knowing God and being close to God and obeying God. That's the kind of peace that just is incredible. And Colossians 3.15 tells us this. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. We've been called to peace. Have peace with everyone. 2 Thessalonians 3.16 says this. May the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way. May God give you, make that your prayer, that God will give you peace at all times and in every way. And then finally in James 317, he tells us this. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then it's peace-loving, then it's considerate, then it's submissive, then it's full of mercy and good fruit. That, that's, the, that's the wisdom that comes from God. That, that's why, that's why the, one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is peace. 
Remember the fruit of the Holy Spirit? Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, gentleness, self-control. Those are the things that the Holy Spirit has, has given you. You, you. you already have the fruit of, of the Holy Spirit within you. You have the ability to have peace in your life, but, but now you know how to, how, to, how to do it better. You, you know now that knowing God, being close to God, being right with God is what gives you peace. Not being out in that world. It's being right with God and then making every effort to be at peace with everyone that's in your life. You, you can't have peace in your life if you don't have peace with others. That's why Jesus said, when you bring your gifts to the altar, if, if, you, if you have something against someone, leave your gift there. Go and make your uh, appeal with your brother or sister and, and try to make peace with them. Then come and give your offering. God wants us to live at peace with, with everyone. So how, what's it like in your life? Do you have peace? Do you have peace in your family? Do you have peace in your church? Do you have peace in your neighborhood? Do you have peace with yourself? Let me, let me pray for you. Father, I pray that everybody that's watching this video, especially those, God, that are going through things in their life now where they're just, they're, 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 peace just isn't there. Peace just isn't there. God, I pray for them. I pray that they heard you loud and clear. I pray, God, that they seek you out, that they cry out to you, the God of peace, the, the, the God that is so far beyond our understanding, knowing that if you can calm, if Jesus, if you can calm a raging sea, you can certainly calm the turmoil that's going on in our life. Uh, maybe, it's, maybe it's almost impossible for us, but not for you, God. So I pray, God, for everybody that's going through something in their life right now, that you, the God of peace, would, would be there for them. Show, show your mighty hand in their life. And we pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Hey, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, I hope that God spoke to you. I hope that you understand where peace comes from. Uh, don't be looking for it in the wrong places. Look for it in the right places, okay? God bless you. Thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, for many, I hope to see you tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock, with our daily devotion. And then uh, tomorrow night is our first uh, our first youth group uh, message with uh, impact. So God bless you. Have a great, great night. And I hope to see many of you tomorrow morning.